cared for, but he'll keep us safe. I mean, that dovetails perfectly with what he said a couple of months ago. And a lot of people are looking at this and saying, I might not really care for him, but I like his policies. Well, that's the reality on the ground with, with Jewish voters, with black voters, with some with female voters in terms of crime, with illegal immigration. But the Harris campaign has always tried to argue that Trump on personality is not fit to be president. They haven't really talked a lot about his policies, and these kinds of ads are pushing back on that notion that you shouldn't vote for Trump simply because you don't like him. He's not there to be your friend. He's there to keep the country safe and to fight back against people in the world who want to do harm to Americans. And just as we go, I just want to put this UA Today Suffolk poll up of Hispanic voters. Take a look at this. Trump leads 49 to 38 over Kamala Harris. Yeah. I've never seen that. That's all about before. inflation and the economy. Wow. Katie, great to see you. Good to see you too. Now it's only 13 Two weeks away. Here we go. Right. <laughs> see you. I mean, Sandra, when you take a look at the change um, in the polling among Hispanic voters, it's just extraordinary. George W. Bush won in 2004. I think he had about 44 percent of the Hispanic vote. If Trump's at 49 and yeah. can hang on to that, a lot of people are saying it's over. That's a really interesting data point this close to Election Day. And you have to wonder, with Kamala Harris off the trail today, if there's, you know, a gathering of strategy, <laughs> a strategy discussion being had about what to what to do the next, you know, few days and two weeks leading up to well, Election Day with some of those key groups. The strategy should bring to call out all of the fire engines that they can get their hands on because yeah. they got serious problems. Could be there. happening. And we anticipate that we should be seeing the former President Obama campaigning for her shortly. We'll be watching for that, John. Meanwhile, former Trump prosecutor Nathan Wayne, remember that name, speaking to the House Thank Judiciary you Committee. Good to see you. But many questions about his White House visits remain after his testimony. Andy McCarthy is here on that and the next steps for lawmakers seeking answers. Plus this. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. Do you still want to ban fracking? No, and I made that clear on the debate stage in 2020. Has Vice President Harris not just gone 180 on fracking, but now a complete 360 or maybe a 520? Critics are, maybe it's a 1080. Questions uh, arise among critics as to where she stands after her aide appears to signal yet another shift on the important issue. Doug Holtz Eakin and Robert Wolf are on decks. <laughs> Talk about fracking. She's had no fracking under, I mean, we have. 25 commercials. We put sometimes we put them on simultaneously. She's just, and now all of a sudden, uh, I love fracking. I think it's wonderful. So that was former President Trump earlier today going after Vice President Harris on her fracking policies. This is the VP appears to once again be changing her stance on this issue, which is obviously essentially, uh, especially crucial in a uh, key battleground state of Pennsylvania. Doug holtz Eakins, former CBO director, Robert Wolf, the former economic advisor to President Obama. Welcome to you both. Speaking of which, we're gonna hear from the former Thank President uh, Obama a bit later next hour, Robert. So first to you, Robert, where does she stand on this issue? It's getting quite confusing. Is she for fracking? Yeah. So I was with the campaign actually in Pennsylvania on uh, Sunday and Monday. She absolutely does not support banning fracking. She supports fracking. She voted on the Inflation Reduction Act, which extended fracking leases. What's really going on is energy companies aren't using the permits and leasing because, as you'll see by their earnings, they're shifting completely to renewable just like in Texas is now more renewable energy than California. So whether so, this is a real debate, uh, in my opinion, um, about someone that's been clear that she does she supports fracking, but the energy companies aren't using the permitting right now anyway. Okay, Doug Holtz, does that make sense to you? Uh, look, has she flip-flopped? Yes, unquestionably. It's on videotype. Uh, her advisors can't seem to give the same answer two days in a row. But the real issue is, where would she be if elected as president? And I think we get a pretty good hint on that from uh, Democratic Senator Bob Casey, whose campaign is now running ads saying, I support Trump's energy plan, because we know what the bottom line there is. He's going to support fracking, support one of the industries that has been part of the renaissance of the state of Pennsylvania, and not support his uh, party's candidate. Okay. So... The reason why the oil industry is now firing this back up with Kamala Harris to, to understand where she sits on the issue, uh, Robert, is because her climate engagement director, Camilla, uh, Camilla Thorndike, <laughs> was giving a brand new interview in which that person said, 
Um, Harris is not banning fracking, but isn't promoting expansion either. What we've heard when she's been challenged on whether or not she's flip-flopped in the issue, she simply said, my values have not changed. Okay, so I'm reading this again. <laughs> but she's not promoting <laughs> expansion either. That's not for fracking. Yeah. Yeah, so so I actually uh, spoke to the campaign this morning. I think you will see that that individual, their climate person, has made a statement. Um, I think that original statement was inartful. I'm probably being kind. But it's clear that from <laughs> uh, Kamala's perspective, the vice president, it's very clear that she supports fracking. She's not a ban for fracking. They've extended the leases. And um, I think what's more important is energy companies are shifting to renewables, and that's where they're putting their cap backs. Well, I'm left wondering, Doug, where does that so, leave her with her with her um, those who are engaged with her on the climate and do want her to ban fracking? Well, uh, first of all, uh, kudos to, to Robert for being gentlemanly about handling this. I mean, uh, the aide really stepped in and made the life complicated. Even Robert had to be very careful on how he said it. He double negative. She doesn't support banning fracking. You got to tiptoe your way through the words there to get to her her position because they've made such a, a mess of this over the year. So, uh, bottom line is she is not repudiating the uh, Biden administration's approach to climate, and that approach has been to ban fuels, not keep track of what goes into the atmosphere, which is ultimately the scientific issue, but instead to demonize fuel after fuel after fuel, coal, oil, natural gas. That's not been an effective strategy. We're not making great progress in dealing with global emissions, and it's not a good economic policy. Well, um, that person, Thorn, Thor, uh, Camilla Thorndike, uh, sought to clarify her comments um, in a tweet yesterday. I should make sure I get this in here, Robert. She said, I did explain myself clearly here. Contrary to Trump's claims, the VP has not banned fracking, doesn't support banning fracking, and in fact cast the tie-breaking vote on the biggest pro-climate law ever, which, yes, opened new fracking leases. People know that is her position. Well, apparently it was news to her. Um, I just want to put up what has happened with energy. Robert, you and I have talked a lot about this over the Biden years, Biden-Harris years. Um, this is energy inflation. This is what the American people say that they're feeling out there, which is why they tie her directly to the policies that have led to this. Um, you've got uh, fuel, uh, gasoline up 30 percent. Um, electricity prices have gone up. Your utility bills have skyrocketed. And this is where they, you know, this is since he took office. This is when Biden and Harris took office. So why are people to believe that she's going to improve a situation that she's been leading to that? Well, I mean, we could have a whole discussion on energy policy. I mean, Douglas knows that energy is a global commodity between the Ukraine war, between the embargo with Russia, between the opening post-COVID. I mean, we've had the perfect storm on energy prices going up. I mean, that's like post sep 11 post Persian Gulf, and post-Russia embargo all happening at once. I was uh, at Solomon Brothers with Philip Brothers. When I was at UBS, we bought Enron. So we can have a total energy policy um, explanation here, but we know it's a global commodity. That would the be good. The good thing is that uh, U.S. <laughs> U.S. is more energy independent than we've ever been and is supplying more oils of barrel than we've ever had. Uh, that being said, we can always do better. And if we were producing more, we wouldn't be so and reliant on all those geopolitics that Robert just mentioned. Final thought, Douglas. Well, I, I think that's an accurate description of world oil markets, but natural gas markets are not global uh, to the extent that oil is. And the Biden administration has actually firmly opposed making them more global by stopping providing permits to build new export uh, facilities. So, yeah, there's, there's products that could be made on global commodity markets, but we've got a, a North American natural gas market, and uh, it's one that, that is very important to the U.S. especially, and that's what this issue is about. Absolutely, and it does obviously set up the fact that there is more clarity needed on energy policy coming from the Harris camp. Robert, we know you are, we're, you're on the phone. We'll check back in with you soon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thanks, Doug. John?